Let's talk now to Rory Daniels, who's the Managing Director of the Asia Society Policy Institute. Uh, good to see you again, Rory. Thanks for coming back on the programme. So we heard some of the detail there of the kind of infrastructure projects that China does. How important are they for the country economically? I think they're incredibly important. And what you see in China is an evolution of those projects from traditional infrastructure, bridges, roads, etc., into areas that support China's high tech and innovation sector. Um, you know, water, for example, um, China being a developed, a developing country, still water is very important to, um, to, uh, to the, the development of Western China and the, the least developed areas. But it's also incredibly important to building the type of data center infrastructure that I think China would like to see long term as it looks at its national tech and innovation policies. So infrastructure is incredibly deeply connected to China's development agenda and the types of infrastructure projects that China will announce or put forth um, in the five-year plan or targets uh, that it will put forth in the five-year plan will be connected to the upgrading of China's economy over time. And uh, the data center infrastructure there, uh, do you think we're witnessing a shift away from this traditional hard infrastructure, hard infrastructure, if you like, like roads, railways, bridges, the kind of thing China builds so efficiently towards perhaps new infrastructure like those data center networks, uh, green energy, uh, smart cities, for example. I think all of those um, projects that you just mentioned are incredibly important to the Chinese leadership, and we will be seeing a move away from um, traditional networks like roads where, you know, China's uh, road infrastructure is already quite dense. The electric vehicle infrastructure is already quite dense. So some of the investment in infrastructure is now going to be moving toward what China calls new quality productive forces, which is really about building the type of integrated tech economy that will sustain China's uh, long-term growth and development, even as it faces demographic challenges of the aging population and displacement in the labor force due to AI and automation. So this is really about leveling up production um, and the, the quality of production over time. So what key policies and announcements uh, will you be looking out for when the details of this five-year plan are released? Um, I'll be looking at everything because I think the what happens this week and the policy documents or summaries that come out of the plenum say a lot about how the state will build the five-year plan. This is a really important time for the Communist Party and particularly for Xi Jinping as a leader to articulate his priorities over the next five years. I'm expecting that uh, the, the there won't be massive policy shifts um, that the assessment of the external environment that China is facing hasn't changed much since the last time a five-year plan was put forward. Um, in that, China feels that you know global growth is slowing, um, that it needs to uh, be more self-sufficient and self-reliant. And I expect that the documents coming out will um, be, be more toward that end. Rory, thanks so much for coming back on the program. That's Rory Daniels, the Managing Director of the Asia Society Policy Institute.